1 Chronicles chapter 5 The sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel. He was the firstborn, but when he defiled his father's marriage bed, his rights as firstborn were given to the sons of Joseph, son of Israel. So he could not be listed in the genealogical record in accordance with his birthright. And though Judah was the strongest of his brothers, and a ruler came from him, the rights of the firstborn belonged to Joseph. The sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel. Hanok, Palu, Hezron, and Carmi. The descendants of Joel. Shemaiah, his son. Gog, his son. Shimei, his son. Micah, his son. Reiha, his son. Baal, his son. And Beira, his son, whom tiglath Pileser, king of Assyria, took into exile. Beira was a leader of the Reubenites. Their relatives by clans listed according to their genealogical records. Jael, the chief, Zechariah, and Bela, son of Azaz, the son of Shema, the son of Joel. They settled in the area from Aroah to Nebo and baal Meon. To the east, they occupied the land up to the edge of the desert that extends to the river Euphrates, because their livestock had increased in Gilead. During Saul's reign, they waged war against the Hagrites, who were defeated at their hands. They occupied the dwellings of the Hagrites throughout the entire region east of Gilead. The Gadites lived next to them in Bashan, as far as Salika. Joel was the chief, Shaphan the second, then Janai and Shaphat in Bashan. Their relatives by families were Michael, Mashalam, Sheba, Jorai, Jachan, Sia, and Eber, seven in all. These were the sons of Abihael, son of Hurai, the son of Jeroah, the son of Gilead, the son of Michael, the son of Jeshisha, the son of Jado, the son of Buzz. Ahai, son of Abdiel, the son of Gunai, was head of their family. The Gadites lived in Gilead, in Bashan and its outlying villages, and on all the pasture lands of Sharon as far as they extended. All these were entered in the genealogical records during the reigns of Jotham, king of Judah, and Jeroboam, king of Israel. The Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh had 44,760 men ready for military service. Able-bodied men who could handle shield and sword, who could use a bow, and who were trained for battle. They waged war against the Hagrites, Jetur, Nafish, and Nodab. They were helped in fighting them, and God delivered the Hagrites and all their allies into their hands, because they cried out to him during the battle. He answered their prayers, because they trusted in him. They seized the livestock of the Hagrites, 50,000 camels, 250,000 sheep, and 2,000 donkeys. They also took 100,000 people captive, and many others fell slain, because the battle was God's, and they occupied the land until the exile. The people of the half-tribe of Manasseh were numerous. They settled in the land from Bashan to Baal Hermon, that is, to Senior, Mount Hermon. These were the heads of their families, Ether, Ishai, Eliel, Azriel, Jeremiah, Hodaviah, and Jadiel. They were brave warriors, famous men, and heads of their families. But they were unfaithful to the God of their ancestors, and prostituted themselves to the gods of the peoples of the land whom God had destroyed before them. So the God of Israel stirred up the spirit of Pul, king of Assyria, that is, tiglath Pileser, king of Assyria, who took the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh into exile. He took them to Hela, Habor, Hera, and the river of Gozan, where they are to this day. 1 Chronicles chapter 6 The sons of Levi, Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. The sons of Kohath, Amram, Itza, Hebron, and Aziel. The children of Amram, Aaron, Moses, and Miriam. The sons of Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar.
Eliezer was the father of Phineas, Phineas the father of Abishua, Abishua the father of Bacchae, Bacchae the father of Azai, Azai the father of Zerahiah, Zerahiah the father of Mareoth, Mareoth the father of Amariah, Amariah the father of Ahitab, Ahitab the father of Zadok, Zadok the father of Ahimahaz, Ahimahaz the father of Azariah, Azariah the father of Johanan, Johanan the father of Azariah. It was he who served as priest in the temple Solomon built in Jerusalem. Azariah the father of Amariah, Amariah the father of Ahitab, Ahitab the father of Zadok, Zadok the father of Shalom, Shalom the father of Hilkiah, Hilkiah the father of Azariah, Azariah the father of Siriah, and Siriah the father of Josedek. Josedek was deported when the Lord sent Judah and Jerusalem into exile by the hand of Nebuchadnezzar. The sons of Levi, Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. These are the names of the sons of Gershon, Libni and Shimei. The sons of Kohath, Amram, Itza, Hebron, and Aziel. The sons of Merari, Malai and Mushai. These are the clans of the Levites listed according to their fathers. Of Gershon, Libni his son, Jehath his son, Zimah his son, Joah his son, Ido his son, Zerah his son, and Jeatharai his son. The descendants of Kohath, Aminadab his son, Korah his son, Asa his son, Elkanah his son, Abiasaph his son, Asa his son, Tehath his son, Uriel his son, Aziah his son, and Sheol his son. The descendants of Elkana, Amasai, Ahimoth, Elkana his son, Zophai his son, Nahath his son, Eliab his son, Jerohan his son, Elkana his son, and Samuel his son. The sons of Samuel. Joel, the firstborn, and Abijah, the second son. The descendants of Merari, Malai, Libni, his son, Shimei, his son, Azza, his son, Shimea, his son, Haggaiah, his son, and Asaiah, his son. These are the men David put in charge of the music in the house of the Lord after the ark came to rest there. They ministered with music before the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, until Solomon built the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem. They performed their duties according to the regulations laid down for them. Here are the men who served together with their sons. From the Kohathites, Heman, the musician, the son of Joel, the son of Samuel, the son of Elkana, the son of Jeroham, the son of Eliel, the son of Toa, the son of Zaph, the son of Alcana, the son of Mahath, the son of Amasai, the son of Alcana, the son of Joel, the son of Azariah, the son of Zephaniah, the son of Tehath, the son of Asa, the son of Abiasaph, the son of Korah, the son of Itza, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, the son of Israel. And Heman's associate Asaph, who served at his right hand. Asaph, son of Berechiah, the son of Shimea, the son of Michael, the son of Baasiah, the son of Malchiah, the son of Ethni, the son of Zerah, the son of Adiah, the son of Ethan, the son of Zima, the son of Shimei, the son of Jehath, the son of Gershon, the son of Levi. And from their associates, the Merarites at his left hand, Ethan, son of Kaishai, the son of Abdai, the son of Malok, the son of Hashabiah, the son of Amaziah, the son of Hilkiah, the son of Amzai, the son of Benai, the son of Shema, the son of Malai, the son of Mushai, the son of Merari, the son of Levi. Their fellow Levites were assigned to all the other duties of the tabernacle, the house of God. But Aaron and his descendants were the ones who presented offerings on the altar of burnt offering and on the altar of incense 
in connection with all that was done in the most holy place, making atonement for Israel, in accordance with all that Moses, the servant of God, had commanded. These were the descendants of Aaron. Eleazar, his son. Phinehas, his son. Abishua, his son. Bacchae, his son. Azai, his son. Zerahiah, his son. Marioth, his son. Amariah, his son. Ahitob, his son. Zadok, his son. And Ahimahaz, his son. These were the locations of their settlements allotted as their territory. They were assigned to the descendants of Aaron, who were from the Kohathite clan, because the first lot was for them. They were given Hebron in Judah with its surrounding pasture lands, but the fields and villages around the city were given to Caleb, son of Jephunneh. So the descendants of Aaron were given Hebron, a city of refuge, and Libna, Yatta, Eshtomoa, Hylen, Debir, Ashan, Jatta, and Beth Shemesh, together with their pasture lands. And from the tribe of Benjamin they were given Gibeon, Jeba, Alameth, and Anathoth, together with their pasture lands. The total number of towns distributed among the Kohathite clans came to thirteen. The rest of Kohath's descendants were allotted ten towns from the clans of half the tribe of Manasseh. The descendants of Gershon, clan by clan, were allotted thirteen towns from the tribes of Issachar, Asher, Naphtali, and from the part of the tribe of Manasseh that is in Bashan. The descendants of Merari, clan by clan, were allotted twelve towns from the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and Zebulun. So the Israelites gave the Levites these towns and their pasture lands. From the tribes of Judah, Simeon, and Benjamin, they allotted the previously named towns. Some of the Kohathite clans were given as their territory towns from the tribe of Ephraim. In the hill country of Ephraim, they were given Shechem, a city of refuge, and Giza, Jokmian, Beth Horan, Ajalon, and Gathrimon, together with their pasture lands. And from half the tribe of Manasseh, the Israelites gave Ana and Biliam, together with their pasture lands, to the rest of the Kohathite clans. The Gershonites received the following. From the clan of the half-tribe of Manasseh, they received Golan in Bashan, and also Ashtaroth, together with their pasture lands. From the tribe of Issachar, they received Kedesh, Dabarath, Ramoth, and Anem, together with their pasture lands. From the tribe of Asher, they received Meshal, Abdon, Yukok, and Rehob, together with their pasture lands. And from the tribe of Naphtali, they received Kedesh in Galilee, Hamon, and Kiriathaim, together with their pasture lands. The Merarites, the rest of the Levites, received the following. From the tribe of Zebulun, they received Jokmium, Carter, Ramono, and Tabor, together with their pasture lands. From the tribe of Reuben across the Jordan, east of Jericho, they received Beza in the wilderness, Jaza, Kedemoth, and Mephaia, together with their pasture lands. And from the tribe of Gad, they received Ramoth and Gilead, Mahanaim, Heshbon, and Jazer, together with their pasture lands. Hebrews chapter 10 The law is only a shadow of the good things that are coming, not the realities themselves. For this reason it can never, by the same sacrifices repeated endlessly year after year, make perfect those who draw near to worship. Otherwise, would they not have stopped being offered? For the worshippers would have been cleansed once for all, and would no longer have felt guilty for their sins. But those sacrifices are an annual reminder of sins. It is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Therefore, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. With burnt offerings and sin offerings you were not pleased. Then I said, Here I am. It is written about me in the scroll. I have come to do your will, my God. First he said, Sacrifices and offerings, burnt offerings and sin offerings you did not desire nor were you pleased with them. 
though they were offered in accordance with the law. Then he said, Here I am, I have come to do your will. He sets aside the first to establish the second, and by that will we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Day after day, Every priest stands and performs his religious duties. Again and again he offers the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But when this priest had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, and since that time he waits for his enemies to be made his footstool. For by one sacrifice he has made perfect for ever those who are being made holy. The Holy Spirit also testifies to us about this. First he says, This is the covenant I will make with them after that time, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts, and I will write them on their minds. Then he adds, Their sins and lawless acts I will remember no more. And where these have been forgiven, sacrifice for sin is no longer necessary. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain that is his body, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience, and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching.